Hellcat at Clementon Park just recently reopened after being closed for nearly three years. This rare SNS Wood Coaster has an ambitious layout and honestly a downright amazing layout, but it has earned a reputation as one of the roughest coasters out there. Is that hellish reputation deserved? Find out in this review of Hellcat. From 1919 to 2002, Jack Rabbit ran at Clementon Park. This was a classic John A. Miller Wood Coaster. The ride would be standing but not operating for another five years, but Clementon Park knew they had a void to fill immediately. Closing Jack Rabbit left the park without a coaster. So late in the 2004 season, Clementon Park unveiled Tsunami. This would be a hybrid coaster. It had wood track, but the ride had a steel support structure. The ride forever changed Clementon's skyline. The coaster looks massive at the end of the park's midway, and I love how the first few drops run along the lake. The ride stands 110 feet or 34 meters tall, which would make it the tallest wood coaster ever built by SNS. Now, SNS is well known for their drop towers and air launch coasters, but in the early 2000s, they built a quartet of wood coasters. The first one, Timberhawk at Wild Waves, is relatively tame, but the latter three were designed by none other than Alan Schilke, who is most notable for his work on RMCs. This explains why these rides had more of an edge to them. In its opening year, Tsunami received rave reviews. Riders praised the fast and intense ride experience. The ride was lauded for its mix of airtime and laterals. The ride already had a high 50-inch height restriction for a wood coaster, but the back car had an even greater 54-inch height requirement if that's any sign of how wild it was. However, there were already reports of the ride running rough due to some suspect track work. The changes for Tsunami began just as second year of operation. After the devastating Indian Ocean Tsunami in December of 2004, Clementon decided to change this coaster's name to J2 to honor the former Jackrabbit. This always seemed like an awkward name, and thankfully didn't last long. After Adrenaline Family Entertainment acquired the park during the 2007-2008 offseason, they renamed the coaster Hellcat, which has gone by ever since. Interestingly, of the four SS Woodies, two actually used the Hellcat name. The other was the now-defunct coaster that used to ride Timber Falls Adventure Park in the Wisconsin Dells. In short time, Clementon's Hellcat got rough. The park retracked portions of the ride after just its second season. Then the ride was closed for a large chunk of the 2007 summer season for similar reasons. The aggressive ride was already tearing itself apart. When the new owners took over in 2008, they had a trim break atop the first drop, which has been present ever since. This significantly neutered the ride experience. Not only was the first drop nerfed, but the train would navigate the layout with far less speed. This sapped the ride much of its airtime, but was an attempt to make the ride more comfortable and save on maintenance costs. For the next decade, Hellcat developed one of the worst reputations in the coaster community. I rode it during the 2017 season. While my front row ride was okay, my back row ride was among the roughest and most uncomfortable experiences I've ever had on a coaster. This was also the same year a piece of the coaster's structure fell off and landed in the thankfully empty queue line, if that says anything about the condition of the ride. Clementon Park and Hellcat closed after the 2019 season. Gene Staples and IB Parks purchased the park in 2021. While the park reopened later that year, Hellcat did not. The ride needed some serious work. Hellcat reopened in June of 2022, but its operation this year has been spotty to say the least. The ride has been routinely down for work. Shortly after its reopening, several enthusiasts found it closed on weekdays. Prior to my visit in mid-August, the ride was listed as temporarily closed on the website for additional track work. I was planning on skipping the park with Hellcat closed, but when I called the park, I was told Hellcat would reopen later that day despite what the website said. Maintenance was working on the ride's drop for a large chunk of the day, but eventually I heard a loud siren signaling the ride was ready to test. After a few test cycles, much to my amazement, the coaster did open for the last three hours of the day. I was interested how my 2022 experience would compare to most ones I got in 2017. I was greeted by a relatively empty queue, that seems to be the theme with Clementon Park's dry side. The queue routes you under a sign warning you that Hellcat is running aggressive. 
The only other park where I've seen a sign like this is at Mount Olympus on Hades 360, which is a concerning similarity. Hellcat Station is comically high off the ground, so you need to climb a large staircase to actually board the experience. This rides oddly small PTC trains with just four cars. The park had two trains at one point, but they may only have one now, and they will only run one train at a given time. Each car seats four riders, so the train can accommodate a maximum of 16 riders. However, the park is only allowing guests in the first two cars at this time. The back two cars are blocked off by cones. When guests asked why, the employee said the back was too rough to be ridden. Based on my 2017 experience, I can believe it. This was an act of mercy by the park, even if it does kill the ride's capacity. I imagine the back cars will be available once again in the future, but only if the ride gets extensive track work. The restraints are your usual individual seatbelt and lap bar combination that you find in most PTCs. They can lower throughout the ride, especially when the coaster jackhammers in the valleys, so I would advise holding onto your bar after it's checked. Once dispatched, you head up the lift hill. You get a great view of the park to your right, and on a clear day, I believe you can see Philadelphia in the distance. At the apex, you get a sweet view overlooking the lake, but most coaster enthusiasts will have their eyes fixed in those trim brakes. Hellcat used to reach a max speed of 56 miles per hour, or 90 kilometers per hour, but you surely do not hit that anymore. The trims slow the train pretty significantly. The drop is still quite steep for a traditional wood coaster at 62 degrees. It did still manage to give a decent pop of air in the back car back in 2017 after you cleared the trim, but it doesn't do much anywhere else in its current state. The initial pullout was shaky even in row 1, and I shudder to think what it would be like in a wheel seat or even the back car right now. You then navigate a giant camelback that gradually turns left. This results in some decent laterals throughout, and those up front get some weak floater airtime too. I don't recall if this element had airtime in the back because I couldn't tell the difference between the extreme jackhammering bouncing me out of my seat and negative G's back in 2017. After another shaky pullout, you navigate another camelback profiled similarly to the prior one. It's just a little shorter. You get some more laterals plus some weak bouncy airtime in that front car. You then shake, rattle, and roll through the far turnaround. The banking gets pretty extreme here and approaches 90 degrees, but the element doesn't have the speed that it used to. The turnaround starts to level off for a second before you suddenly dip downwards. This is the best element on the ride by far. Not only does this drop have an amazing head chopper with a helix, but it gives a really strong pop of air time no matter where you're sitting. Next is a 540 degree upwards helix, and boy is this rough. I'm sure this element was supposed to be about laterals and positives, but I can only focus on the train jittering in its current state. Because of how poorly it tracked, it felt like Hellcat was bleeding off speed fast. You then drop into the return run, which consists of a bunny hill, a bank turn, and another bunny hill. This was the smoothest part of the ride back in 2017, presumably because it's the one part of the ride that doesn't push the envelope. And the two bunny hills even had some air time. These hills are still smooth in 2022, but the negative G's are gone. You carry a lot less speed through this section. You then rise into the final brakes, and I was honestly surprised the train didn't valley each time. You then hit the brakes and return to the station, ending the 2,602 foot or 793 meter long coaster, but the experience isn't quite over yet. You see, Hellcat's exit doesn't drop you off back in the main park. Rather, you're dumped off in the park's picnic pavilion. You then need to go past a security checkpoint to re-enter the park. I cannot think of any other attraction out there with a setup as weird as this. My front row ride was shaky in 2022, but I could tolerate it. It just wasn't good but based off the screams of riders behind me in my 2017 experiences, this ride is the holy grail of pain further back in the train. I would avoid these seats until this ride gets some serious TLC, unless you have a morbid curiosity. So what would I rate Hellcat? I would give this wood coaster a 2 out of 10. It pains me to rate this ride so low. I can tell the layout as designed is amazing. It's a unique layout that should mix airtime and laterals based on the opening year reports but you can't get that ride right now, not in the least bit. 
The trim brakes sap the ride of its pacing and power. Then the poor tracking also hampers the ride's speed while also causing a bumpy experience for riders. If this ride ever got a full retracking, whether it be wood or something more extreme like Titan Track, you can bad rush down to experience it. Hopefully this is in the cards in the future because there is a great ride hidden within Hellcat. It just needs to be unlocked once again. So those are my thoughts on the current version of Hellcat at Clementon Park. What are your thoughts on this rare SNS wood coaster? Let me know down below. I'd especially love to know when you rode this coaster because that could dramatically impact your ride experience. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.